In previous videos, I've shown you how to use Docker Compose to quickly and easily spin up a development environment for PHP and a Laravel application. In this video, I want to keep going a little further and see how we can make a development workflow easier. Now, I have a Docker Compose file here mixed in with my Laravel files. In other videos, I had this up one level, but I didn't in this case. There's really no difference in there at all, except for the Docker Compose file is tweaked a little bit to share the current directory instead of a uh, subdirectory. So we can see here that I have volumes, I'm just sharing the current directory. Now, we saw a bunch of commands that you can run, for instance, this one. For this command, I'm running artisan to make our auth scaffolding. But really, it could be any command, such as testing or any other artisan command to make controllers or make models, to make migrations, all that good stuff that you probably do pretty often. Typing out this long command is really annoying. So let's see how we can improve that situation. Now, there's a few ways to do this. You can run a bash script. You can use something like PHP's Envoy, which is a little task runner. But what I like to do is make a make file, and that lets me use make which provides us an easy way to run quick tasks. So for example, if I use makefile, I'll create a file called make, and I set a command named foo, I can have this command named foo execute command bar. So with that simple declaration, I can just do make foo, and it's gonna attempt to run bar. Now of course, that doesn't relate to any real command, it's just an example. But we can see how easy it is to get up and running with a quick command using makefiles. So let's make some real commands. I'm going to paste this in, and this won't necessarily make sense at first, but let's just go over that. I'm going to make two commands, one called up and one called down, and they're going to be marked as phony, which for make files just means that they don't produce any artifacts. They don't create any files as a result of the commands. They just run a task and then finish. So I'm going to make one called up. That is going to run docker compose up-d. And I'm going to make one called down. That is going to run docker compose down. Pretty simple. Once that's done, I can just run make up. It's going to run docker compose up d, and we're going to be off and running with our application. Here, if I head to localhost, we'll see that my Laravel application is up and running. So, what else do we do? Well, I often find myself tailing the Laravel logs. So, I'll do tail storage logs laravel.log, and I can just see output as it gets sent to that log file. So let's make our make file do that for us as well. Up here, I'm just going to add a new command called log. And we'll set what that command is going to do. And that's going to tail dash f pwd, and I'll show this in a second, storage logs laravel.log, which is great. It's just tailing the log file. But we have all this other stuff too. And all this is going to do is going to send it through awk. And it's going to find keywords like info, warning, error, next, alert, stack trace. And it's going to do stuff to colorize it. So it's a really simple thing I took from a script that I will link to and then adjusted it to work in make files, like escaping the dollar sign with another dollar sign and escaping each new line with a slash here. And the result of this is that we will get some colorized output. But first I need to make this variable. So I'm just gonna paste that in. So what we do here is two things. We're setting variables inside of our make file. Make path is the file path, the full file path, including the file name of the make file. And from that, we get the directory of the make path variable. So in other words, we're just getting whatever directory the make file that we're running happens to be in. And then we can use that variable later with this notation. PWD that actually has a slash at the end of it. So we don't need a slash between these characters, but we do PWD to get the directory of the make file so that all the commands we run here are relative to the file path of the make file. So PWD storage layer of our logs. Let's see if that works. Make log, and that is running all that command to colorize our output of the log file, and it's tailing it. Now this is all yellow because it hasn't hit any of the keywords like error or warning next or stack trace, but if we saw more of this, we would see some of that colorized output. Great, so, so far we have phony, up, down, log, up, down, log, those commands, they're set as phony. We have the PWD variable here so that we can reuse that in certain places to make sure that we're running certain commands relative to the makefile file path. I have two more commands we're going to cover. The first one here is tinker, and as you might guess, that is going to let us use PHP Artisan Tinker easily. So as usual, we are going to set tinker as phony, and we're going to make a new command here, and I'm just going to paste one in. So we're going to run a new Docker container. We are going to set a home directory and create a .tinker directory and set it to home config and all that stuff. All this does is help us save the shell, the tinker shell, the size shell it's called, 
the history of that so that we can use it later. I have a whole video on that, so I'm not going to cover it any further, but just know that we're running a PHP container and it's going to run PHP Artisan Tinker. Because I have the IT flags here, it's going to be interactive. So let's do make tinker, and then I'll be in a tinker command here. And see, I can do Laravel commands, such as creating random strings, and of course I can exit out of tinker. Now if I run that again and hit up, we'll see that I have the command history there. All right, let's see what we want to do if we need to run any other artisan command, like making controllers, making models, listing our routes. I'm going to show you one way I do that, and that is to create a new command. I'll just call it artisan, and here we'll define it. So I have artisan, the command, and that's going to do something, obviously. So let's paste that in, and well, this is going to run PHP artisan, but we're not passing it anything. But let's just see what happens there. Make artisan. This is going to list out all the available commands, just like what would happen if you run PHP artisan. So how do we pass it something? So this is actually the part that gets a little bit hairy. It's not the most refined, but it is a workable solution. I'm going to make a new variable. I'll just call it art, and I'm going to set it to a blank string. And down here, we're just going to pass that here to the command here. Now we can pass the art variable. So let's just see. I'm going to make artisan again, pass it nothing. That means we're passing it a blank string, and we just get a listing of available artisan commands again. Now, if we want that to actually do something, we can pass it a variable. So let's do route list. Note here that I am passing it a variable called art, and I'm setting it to route list, so that will get passed to PHP artisan here. And we got our list of routes available. So it's not the most elegant solution, but you can do anything like controller make, and if you have spaces here, we can edit in quotes and add other variable options here as well, and we can do that to run artisan commands. So let's just head over and see that make file one more time. Remember that we set things as phony because they don't create artifacts. Up, down, log, tinker, and artisan, just any commands. We set file paths. Most importantly, we get the pwd command so we can use correct file paths for all our files. We have docker compose up, docker compose down, log to tail log files with color output, tinker to get into artisan tinker, and artisan to run any other artisan command you might need to run. The last command I'm going to show you for our make file here is how to run unit tests. So we're just going to make a new command here called test. I got to jump up here before I forget. We're going to add this to our list of phony commands as well. So we'll just add phony, hop back down here, make command test. And we'll paste in a test. As you might expect, we're just going to run a container. We're going to run PHP, get our directory shared, and run PHP unit within that. So I can save and quit that and just run make test. And that is going to run PHP unit. And we can see I'll have a working test suite. Perfect. Now, the very last thing I'm going to show you is a little bit of a shortcut to this if you don't like this workflow or if you have something else that doesn't necessarily fit into it. So if I do docker compose ps, We'll see our containers here. I'm going to grab the PHP one here, and I'm going to do docker exec it, grab that container name, and I'm going to run bash. And this is sort of like logging into the container. I'm actually running bash inside of the container, and I can go to var dub dub HTML inside of it. We can see everything here, and I can run artisan from within that. Actually, I need the PHP part first. But from here, I can run PHP artisan commands as well. So if you want to do that, that might be a little simpler for you. You can just run exec to get into that container and continue on there as well. And you'll be within the network and all that good stuff because you're in an already running container. You didn't spin up a new container for this. So I hope that shows you how you can set up your own development workflow using Docker easily for your PHP applications.